doing great. I'm doing great. It was a great uh, week of training. So I'm glad, uh, you know, I got some time now to rest. Good, good, good to hear. Well, it, it is Friday. So any weekend plans? Are you going to be watching the fights this, tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. I'll probably watch, watch the fights and, you know, just rest, train. Doesn't change too much for me, you know, these days when I have a fight coming up, I try to stay a little bit more at home and kind of enjoy the time that I have to rest. And, and if not, I'm just training. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I know you're fighting not until October. So is there any, have you started camp yet? Or are you just trying to uh, stay in shape? What's, what's the plan? Yeah, you know, um, I'm always training. So I'm basically in camp. But um, I'm preparing. I'm just training hard. And, you know, I know I still have some months, but uh, I'd like to work. So, yeah, I'm basically already, like, putting all that work in. Perfect. Well, uh, first off, before I get uh, any further, thanks for taking your time to come on here and uh, lend, lend me interview here. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's always good to, you know, uh, talk around and everything, yeah. No problem. So talking about the fight this weekend, you got uh, TJ Dillashaw. He's coming back after like two years and he's fighting Corey Sanhagen, who's been like red hot. So, I mean, how, how do you see this matchup going? Man, um, yes, he's coming, but I think he, I mean, he didn't stop training. You know, of course, he's not fighting for two years and he ha and the other guy he's been competing, but it's not going to be easy. I think it's a really interesting fight. You know, the, I don't know how to pronounce the other name, uh, the other guy's name, but he's really good, man. He's been doing a lot of work, you know, highlights. So I don't know. I, I don't have a favorite for this one, but, uh, definitely excited to watch. Yeah, it'll be definitely to see. It'll definitely be crazy to see. I know a lot of people are giving TJ Dillashaw, you know, a lot of bullshit because of the EPO problem, but you know, that's in the past and hopefully he's, for sure. You know, I think they just need to kind of leave that in the past. But enough, enough about them. Let's talk about you here. So, you know, looking at your, you know, your pro career, I mean, you, you know, you're still, I mean, you're only five, six years in, in with your pro career. You're already in the UFC. So, you know, you've had a chance to be LFA champion. How was the, I guess, I, I'll actually, I'll ask that after, but, um, you know, you being kind of, you know, only five, six years into your pro career, was fighting always something that you wanted to do growing up? Uh, not really. You know, it was, um, I was always very active. I like training. I like competing. But fighting was not something I did in my childhood. You know, it was something very new to me when I uh, first got into it. When I first did my, my boxing uh, class in jiu-jitsu, it was like the first contact that I had with martial arts. So, no, I never decided that. And even in the, the beginning of my career, it was just, you know, a hobby rather than just like, oh, I want to do this for the rest of my life or take it as a career. You know, I was definitely not uh, in my mind to to be where I'm at right now. Well, and I mean, certainly I don't know if you did you see yourself getting into the UFC this quick? Yeah, I, I did, especially when I started competing in the LFA. Mm -hmm. um of course when I did my first pro fight I already knew that I wanted to compete at a high level you know so I mean I I started seeing how difficult it was to uh fight you know constantly there was not a lot of girls so I already knew uh, it was time to go to the UFC so uh yes it did happen fast but you know I think uh it was it was just a blessing it was in the right time when it came well, and I think that's kind of like the narrative of, with a lot of uh, with a lot of fighters that become champions in, in the LFA. I mean, they become champion or they they become very successful and then they they ship them off. I don't want to say that, but they they do kind of send them off to the UFC to the next level. I mean, we just saw uh, Lupita uh, Goodness. Uh, she just made her debut, I think, a couple months ago. She was L, uh, the LFA strawweight champ. So I think the LFA is really that stepping stone. It's really good that they that they're really good. I mean, they they basically let go of your your contract and let you go off to the UFC. It's really good that they do that. Definitely, you know, I really appreciate it because uh, not only it's part of, you know, my career, but because the way they open 
the doors for me to, you know, other possibilities. It was just amazing, you know, and I still have a lot of contact with uh, it's what is in. It's amazing. It's just a great show. I think it's growing a lot. Uh, I don't know if you saw they did a uh, show in Brazil. So, you know, the show, it's growing. And I feel it's, it's it gets a lot of talent, people out there, and they can show their work in, in that platform. So, yeah. Absolutely. Now, obviously, I recognize the accent. So I, I, I'm going to ask, ask an obvious question. So you were obviously born in, uh, in Colombia. Um, how long did you live there for? And when did you move to the United States? Um, so I, yeah, I was born and raised in Colombia, in Medellin, that's my city. Mm -hmm. And I moved around five years and a half, uh, here to the United States. So it's been, yeah, uh, not a long time, but you know, enough to, to build my whole career and my home here. So, yeah. Awesome. And I mean, and that just opens up the question for your nickname, Colombian queen. I mean, I got to ask, I mean, I, I know that you do train at Kings MMA. So is that kind of how you got that nickname? I just, I, I see a little bit of a, a little bit of a connection going on there. Um, yeah, I feel it was a couple of people that uh, get, started to call me like that. That was maybe one of the reasons also, you know, just uh, the girl from Colombia and uh, year has passed, you know, and I'm here and I don't know people kind of stuck with it so yeah and uh i'm i'm actually very glad um because every time i re I, I hear that Columbian queen is just uh something that it's been building from a long time you know ago and then this past five years that i have uh had the opportunity to live here in california mm -hmm. now living in uh south bay i and i just um it just reminds me of all the, the, the career and like all the steps that I had to do to, to get where I'm at. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I think it would be really cool. And obviously I know you got your fight. Um, I'm not sure. It's, I think the date's still to be determined and the venue still to be determined. Uh, but I think it'd be pretty great if they could bring the, the UFC to Columbia. It'd be great to get you on that card there. Yeah. Uh, but I do have a date. It's uh, October 9th. Or sorry, yes, but, it's October 9th, but the venue's still still there. The venue, yeah, but uh, for sure, I, I, I wish, you know, I don't know with the COVID stuff and everything, but definitely, I mean, that's one of my dreams, of course, and travel around the world and, and fight, and definitely one of the countries will be mine, so yeah. Yeah, that would that be that would be pretty awesome. I mean, just just be able to do that in front of your former country there. Um, but enough about that. So, looking at um, you know your last fight uh, prior to your fight with Davis, um, you know you had your the fight prior. You had it at flyweight. I mean, all your fights have been pretty much at flyweight. So, looking at that, you mentioned that you wanted to move up to bantamweight. So. That being part of the question there, what prompted your decision to move up to Bantamweight and you have your next fight and you're going back down to flyweight? So what prompted that decision? So one of the reasons why I took the 135 fight, it was because I wanted to fight a little bit more constant. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. There you go. Um, a little bit more constant. So... That was one of the reasons to, because I, I mean, I, I can make 125, but no more than two or three times a year. And three, it's already, you know, a struggle. But um, yeah, I just wanted to fight constant. But um, I decided, you know, to go back to my division. Uh, I do a couple more fights. I'm still young. Um, I can make weight. So definitely there. And if like a big chance. To fight up in 135 i'll get it but uh i'm focused right now for for the 125 division and fighting uh you know a weight class higher than the 125 d did you see a big difference or how, how did you what was the experience like well it was totally different experience just because personally i can say that in just in how i felt in the weight cut so there's huge difference right there. Uh, I had to work differently as well because I wanted to build muscle. You know, I just didn't want to just, oh, I'm going to just eat a little bit, not the high, you know, I want to, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to try to build my body for it. So yes, there's a, there's 
a lot of difference uh, in power. You know, uh, I'm pretty tall still for 135, but um, I feel like, yeah, to make that step again, 135, I will change my body completely, you know, to, to be stronger, to be, you know, like a little bit more solid in the division. So, I mean, 135 is definitely an option for you in the future. Is this what I'm hearing you say? I mean, not in the near future. You know, I want to I wanna focus a little bit more in flyweight. Mm -hmm. I want to make statements here. I want to get to know, you know, I want to spread my name out there. And then in the future, for sure, you know, I'm only 24 years old. And I know that, uh, you know, the body evolves. So, I mean, I'm not close to possibilities. I'm going up in the future. But right now, it's just uh, focus on flyweight. Excellent. And I think that the flyweight division is just growing more. I think that at the moment, they're, the, the division's really working on its identity, I, I feel. The bantamweight division really had years to grow. The strawweight division had time to grow. Now it's time for the flyweight division to really grow. You know, Valentina's right at the top there. So it, it, it's definitely time for the, the flyweight to really show their show the, the contenders coming up. Definitely. And there's more and more fights in in flyway you almost every weekend there's a flyweight uh fight so yeah i feel like there's a big there's a lot of uh a lot of girls kind of leapfrogging from bandweight to flyway and then from uh from strawweight to uh, up to up to flyweight there seems to be a lot of weight kind of issues it, it'd be nice if they had more weight classes i had a lot of other ladies on the podcast where they've had like a lot are fighting them adam weight in other in other organizations they said i'd love to fight in the ufc but until they have that division open for me i can't do it <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's true that's true i mean I can, I can understand that. And of course, there's always going to be more divisions, more options and more girls are going to be fighting. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a good option for me. I, I don't know. I feel like I stick pretty, pretty well for for now at 125. So I, I would not never go to 115. Fair enough. Fair enough. And looking at yourself, you obviously, you know, you you believe in your skills, but you being a former LFA champion, does that give you the confidence needed to become the, the champion and uh, the flyweight champion in the UFC and, and beating if Valentina is still the champion one day? Yeah. You know, I feel not only being the LFA champ, but the work that I'm putting in the UFC, you know, fighting the best of the world. I think that is, what is going to make the statement of uh, why I should be the champion, you know, one day. So yes, of course the, the whole past, all the whole fights that I have done in my life is going to take me to that place. But I think it's the constant work that I'm doing daily. So, yeah. Excellent. And look, talking about your, your upcoming opponent, I mean, Mariana Asperpova, I, I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. Um, you know, looking at this girl, I mean, she's I, looking at her record. She's dangerous. I mean, she's finishing fights. I mean, she's had two performance of the night bonuses. Um, but, you know, she got beat by a girl that you had beaten. So, uh, you know, looking at this fight, I mean, it's an interesting fight. How do you see this fight going? Um, well, I'm excited, too, for this fight. I think it's a great opportunity for me. And, uh, I mean, she's a striker. I think uh, I can end that fight, uh, you know, standing. But it's MMA, you know. And um, it, the, the game is a little bit more complex. So, I think it's, it's good because there's a lot of variety to, to do. You know, MMA uh, has jiu-jitsu, has a wrestling. So, definitely a good matchup. I think uh, the fans will like it a lot. I, I'm going to give it all, you know, training hard for it to give a performance, to give the best, best version that uh, people is going to see about myself. So, yeah. And I mean, we kind of just talked about uh, going up in weight, going back down to fly weight. Um, you, you know, this fight's going to be in, in October. So, um, you know, obviously they don't have the venue yet, but um, it being in October, do you feel like you're going to have a little bit of room for another fight or are you just focusing on this fight at the moment? Um, I mean, I'm focusing for sure in this fight and let's see what happens, but I will, I will definitely would like to finish with three fights in a year. I never done that before. So 
it will be very interesting to do that. Awesome. And uh, could you give me any prediction for this fight? Oh, man. Um, I think uh, we both have to have hands up because I, I think uh, the fight is going to finish uh, with some good strikings, you know. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. And I, and I know I just touched upon it. There's no venue yet. Um, do you feel like they're still going to have the fights in Las Vegas by October time? Um, I mean, I, I don't know, I guess, but there's so many options as well. You know, there's, uh, Texas, there's, I mean, Florida, I guess they're going to go back. I'm not sure. Uh, so it, for me, it doesn't really matter uh, where, because, uh, fight is fight. You know, I like to travel too. If it's in Vegas, it's not too far for me. So anywhere it's good for me. Well, and I know because of the fight nights they've been having, they're still behind the closed doors. I know that they're that they're still having and having them at the Apex Center. Um, I mean, you've had a chance to fight with a crowd and without crowds. So, uh, do you do you prefer the no crowds? I mean, being able to hear your coaches, or are you ready for the crowds to come back? Oh, I, I miss crowd. I do miss it. Like I walking out for for the key, the octagon. I mean. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing to to feel that energy from people, the fans. So I can't wait to to go back to to the public for sure. Yeah, I, I think it would be good too. I think you know it, it kind of sucks right now because all the pay per views they're they're able to kind of they're able to bring them to uh, locations where they're able to have the crowds, and uh, it kind of sucks for the fighters that get stuck on those fight night cards where. Unfortunately, they're still having them at the apex, so no crowds. So hopefully they can do something soon, because I'm sure it sucks for those fighters that kind of get stuck in that in that situation. Well, I mean, I honestly think it's a great opportunity as well, because if you look at uh, you've seen never almost what they stopped for like a month or so. I, I mean, I think it was not even a month. So it was a great opportunity for us fighters to use that as a platform because it was one year one of the few sports that was still going on, you know? So now that we have public, I mean, you can still use that platform because there's, I mean, it's just your chance, you know? It doesn't really matter if, if there's going to be a lot of people or not because people are going to still going to see you, you know? They're going to watch you. It doesn't matter where, if it's there or, um, you know, on TV. But uh, yes, the energy from the public, it's just uh, amazing. It's another vibe. And every time you have a fight and, you know, assuming that your fight's going to be in Las Vegas as of right now, um, like, do you, uh, wherever, wherever the fight's at, do you like to leave right away? Do you like to stay, do you like to stay for a couple of days and make it kind of like a vacation? And what do you do to celebrate? Um, it really depends. Um, where is the fight? If, if it's too far away, I like to stay, you know, a few days and, get to know the city that I, I'll fight, you know, uh, if it's far away. Um, but it really depends. Uh, I mean, uh, last fights, I just uh, go back home the night of the fight or, you know, or next day in the morning. So uh, it really depends. And to celebrate, um, I think just being home with my family and, uh, and get some rest. I think that's the best way to, to celebrate. It doesn't change too much for my daily you know, activity rather than I'll be maybe training a little bit less. So, yeah. Excellent. And your thoughts? I mean, you got Valentina Shevchenko and Lauren Murphy um, fighting uh, in uh, soon. And, uh, you know, and and that's in your division. So what, like, what's your, what's your thoughts on that matchup and who do you think wins the fight? Um, Great matchup. You know, I feel uh, Lauren, she's been in the game for a long time. You know, she's been uh, struggling and showing her, but then showing all of her fights. So I think it's a very interesting fight, but um, I think I'm going with Valentina, you know, for decision, honestly. But uh, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited for that fight. And I, and I think a lot of people really underestimate Lauren. And yeah. with her being a veteran, I think she has a lot of sneaky um, moves that she has there that um, Valentina is a veteran. I would consider a veteran now, but, you know, I think 
uh, like age wise, I mean, Lawrence, you know, has more the has more the light, the experience. And I think that I think she has a lot more to offer than people think it than than people think she does. And uh, I, I'm excited to kind of see what's going to happen. And, and I mean, it very well could be a you know one sided fight or it could be a very competitive. We're going to have to see. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a good matchup. I think. Uh, yeah, our, I'm ex- I'm just excited to see that. And it's not too far, so yeah. So you will be watching, for sure, for sure. Oh, awesome, excellent. Well, if, again, if people don't know, uh, Sabia Mazio will be fighting uh, Mariana. Uh, I'm gonna Maria say, Agapova. Agapova. <laughs> Opova. Uh, sorry, <laughs> on, uh, on October 9th. And uh, again, thank you for coming on, and uh, thank you for taking your time to come on the podcast. Thank you, thank you very much. It's it's a pleasure, you know, to speak to everyone that is still, I mean, or already know the sport or just got into it. You know, it's always interesting to share a little bit about me. No problem. You take care, and and next time, and next time you have a fight, I'd love to have you back on. Thank you very much.